programming computer since I was 11. I considered it my letter from Hogwarts, my gateway into this magical world where anything was possible and you were only bounded by your imagination and your passion. And after all these years, it still hasn't ever ceased to amaze me how computers can be so very fast and capable and yet so incredibly dumb. To make a computer do the simplest things, you have to tell it in precise detail exactly what to do. It gets frustrating really fast, but it did teach me something about intelligence. The human mind isn't special because it can think fast, but because it can learn. During our short stay here on Earth, we have learned to communicate through written and spoken language. We have used our capacity to learn to develop cultures and civilizations. And we are the only species on Earth capable of doing all of that. But now, there's another species made of silicon and metal, capable of learning all the things that we can and faster. To paraphrase a famous quote, teach a computer to fish and you'll have your fish. Teach a computer to teach itself how to fish and it might take over the world. Yes, I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence, but not in the science fiction existential threat context, but in the context of how the sheer usefulness of AI will impact all our lives. Even today, computers surpass humans in ways we previously could not imagine. As an example, self-driving cars are not just way cooler, but also safer. After all, when it's the computer behind the wheel, you can trust it to not be drunk, to not be texting while driving, and to not be distracted in any other way. Maybe someday, even in our own lifetimes, we'll get to ditch normal, boring cars driven by dangerous, unpredictable humans for something better, something which is clearly the better alternative. Sounds good, right? That is until you consider the ugly side. There are millions of people around the world who depend on driving for their livelihood. Taxi drivers and chauffeurs, delivery drivers, truckers, and many more jobs will simply become obsolete because of self-driving autonomous cars. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. From factory workers to journalists to doctors, many jobs are under threat. Now it is important to distinguish between strong artificial intelligence, also known as artificial general intelligence, and weak artificial intelligence, AKA applied artificial intelligence. There are many examples of weak AI around us today. Siri, Google's self-driving cars, and Netflix's movie recommendation algorithm. However, strong AI is something more powerful, something a little bit beyond what we are capable of building today. Because you see, strong AI will be able to perform the full range of human cognitive abilities. An artificial general intelligence will be able to do everything that we can and eventually be able to replace humans, not just in specific areas, but in all of them. And many experts believe that this goal will be achieved within the century. So how do we program a computer to learn things on its own and get better through experience? Well, perhaps we can take some tips from the human mind itself. This is a neuron. With its dendrites and axon, it transmits and receives signals and processes them. If you have enough of these together, then you can do some truly amazing things. When you try to recognize the image on the slide, when you try to comprehend what you're hearing, even when you're feeling excited or bored, the neurons in your head are firing to produce that effect. Now, artificial neural networks are based on biological neural networks. So one way to train an artificial neural network would be to give it a set of inputs that go up there and outputs that come out over here. And the computer will try to figure out exactly how each neuron should process the data it's given to produce the desired output. Now, it isn't difficult to see how a computer can become smarter than humans. They just don't have the same biological limitations that we do. They don't age, burn out, or get bored. Computers can transfer data between each other easily at super fast speeds. When we build the first smarter than human AI, we can make several copies of it by transferring software simply onto other computers. Furthermore, whenever we feel like upgrading the AI's performance, in many cases, we can simply just upgrade its hardware. I mean, we all wish we could do that. So a lot of people now think, um, well, humans are slow and won't be able to surpass machine intelligence. But computers can never really be as creative as we can, can they? Well, creativity is just a fancy word for some of the processing that happens in your head, which is totally opaque to you. And today, there are people working on algorithms that can write stories and compose poems and music, even write tweets and jokes. And perhaps one example of computers being what we call creative is AlphaGo. AlphaGo was, one of, uh, was a computer system trained to master the ancient game of Go. In March, it crushed one of the world's best Go players at his own game. Experts describe some of its moves as something no human pro could have thought of. 
Some of his moves were simply strange and brilliant. If that's not creativity, then I don't know what is. So the grand conclusion is that eventually, there will be no jobs except for humans. That means the end of work for all of us. Now, a lot of people think that their lives won't have the same meaning if all of their achievements, all of their creativity, all of their skills can be replicated by a computer. Well, perhaps when we're looking ahead, the future seems scarier and more confusing than it actually is, because it doesn't have to be that way if we're prepared. I think artificial intelligence will affect all your lives and, and our civilization in a drastic way. Because in all the corners of our globe, we are facing problems of environmental destruction, poverty, disease, violence, cancers, metaphorical and literal. And having more intelligence at our disposal will make these problems, as well as others, easier to solve. So let's banish our doubts for a moment and imagine a world that does have smarter than human artificial intelligence. That world is supremely difficult to imagine simply because of the great change happening in it. Computers will help us make scientific discoveries in an astonishing pace. Diseases being cured left and right. So artificial intelligence will be able to use some of its resources to make our problems a little easier to solve. It can use some of its resources to improve itself, to make itself even better, so it can continue to improve itself. In such a world, humans simply won't be able to keep up with the speed and recursive self-improvement of artificial intelligence. And I believe that such a future is likely because there is nothing supernatural about the human brain. Whenever you come up with a new idea, have a strange thought, feel a new emotion, your brain is following the laws of physics. It is complicated, yes, but one day we can make something even better, something not constrained in the same way we are, and that something can make even better intelligent machines. And so, Intelligence is an awesome tool that can be used for both good and evil. And someone could use easily uh, the cap capabilities of a smarter than human artificial intelligence to cause great harm, which is why international cooperation will become crucial to avert these threats. But more than that though, the future beyond tomorrow will require a new way of thinking from all of us. On 5th of June 2016, Switzerland became the first country in the world to hold a referendum on unconditional basic income. It was rejected, but it sparked a discussion. An unconditional basic income is a form of social security in, all, in which all the citizens of a country receive a predetermined amount of money from the government, regardless of whether they're employed or not. I don't think we are quite ready for that yet, but as we move forward, it may become the only way for us to deal with the lack of jobs available to humans. So this is something that will happen, and if you want to, if you want to delay the inevitable, it's time to move away from blindly repeating facts to start processing using them. It's time to stop doing boring, repetitive, easily automated tasks to starting tasks that require more creativity and thought. It's time to stop following orders like mindless robots and start thinking differently, more creatively, more compassionately. In the end, however, there's nothing stopping us from becoming completely useless in the economy. Everything we can do, computers will be able to do better. And maybe that's okay. In the future, I imagine humans will not have to work in the traditional sense leaving them time to do the things they want to do. In such, that, that's a far away future, but thinking about it helps us realize our own thoughts about the value of the human life. We can't let ourselves be defined simply by our achievements, our skills, or our knowledge, since that can easily be exceeded by that of a computer. To truly embrace the future beyond tomorrow, we will need to rethink what it means to be human. What is the meaning of our lives, and how will that change in the future? Thank you.